morning, everybody. Okay, as you can see, um, we're having some issues up there. Uh, so we've got part of A and part of B closed. Um, but our lawyer who's fighting with the manufacturer who manufactured the ceiling panels up there that are causing all our problem, he comes to Mass here and he sits in section B. And so he wasn't able to sit there last night. He had to sit over here. So he told me after Mass, he goes, I've already contacted the engineer and we're gonna have somebody here this week that will take that trim board down so we can open back up section B. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have section B back open by next week. Okay, so for communion, for section B, for those in the back in the open section B, you could not come this way because we will have no communion ministers that way. You'll have to go through section C and come down this way, okay? Section A, the half that's open, you would just come down uh, the lighter tile down towards the credence table and your minister, Eucharistic minister will be right in front of, the, of that and the cup minister will be over by the outlet against the wall. So you just go back on the darker tile, back to your seats, okay? Easy peasy. All right. So this is the last weekend to purchase your tickets to our parish auction, which will be held this Friday at 6.30 p.m. This will be a very fun evening. It's called, the theme is Cinco de Mayo. We will have Mexican food catered by Mojitos. Uh, the very last day to buy your tickets is Wednesday because we need to give a final number for the food. So don't miss out on this fun opportunity to not only help your parish, but the opportunity to win great prizes. You don't want to miss out on a trip to Branson, two trips to Branson, um, a trip, a seven day trip to Hawaii um, at the Princess right on the beach, two bedroom, two bath, um, as well as gift baskets of bourbon, a new fire pit, a Royals game day ready package, Taylor Swift concert tickets. Do we have any Swifties here? Any of your grandkids? There you go. Well, we, we have the St. Uh, Michael's over in Kansas. I heard theirs went, they had Swifty tickets and that heard they went for $20,000. Ours, I don't think will go that high. So you're more than welcome to come and purchase those. All right. So there's so much, there'll be a lot there to offer. Okay. The Green Team and Respect Life Committee have organized a screening of the letter. I've talked about that for the last two weeks. So there's more information in the bulletin. We have a special collection today for the Altar Society. The Altar Society uses these donations to purchase our hosts, wines, altar linens, and many other things to do with the liturgy. The Respect Life Committee will be holding a diaper drive to benefit Raymore Baby Grace's diaper program. It will be the first two week weekends in May. Um, and then Biagio's classes are gonna be starting in May with May 10th and 11th. More information is on the table or in the bulletin. We also have our first communion kids today who will be making their first communion, so congratulations. <laughs> we also have a birthday today. <laughs> 61. Actually, I'm going backwards, I'm 59 now. <laughs> All right, who else is celebrating birthdays? Back here, when's your birthday? Friday. Friday, happy birthday to you. Is it her birthday? Last week, okay. Any others? Tuesday, happy birthday. Your birthday? Yes. Next Sunday, happy birthday. Okay, back here, when's your birthday? 30 on Thursday. 30 on Thursday, happy birthday. Okay, anniversaries. Back here, Incy's, when's your birthday, anniversary? How many years? 35, congratulations. We'll have a drink together. <laughs> okay, is that it? Okay.
We sing together this morning, Sing to the Mountains, number 519 in your gather hymnal, 519. Uh, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. In baptism, we begin a special relationship with Jesus, who journeys alongside us forever. By the sprinkling of this water, may we be reminded of Christ's great love for us. Lord, our God, you made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race, and through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we all received and grant that we may share in the gladness of all our brothers and sisters who at Easter received their baptism through Christ our Lord.
And may Almighty God cleanse us of our sins. And through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither he was abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth, as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my flesh shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Lord, you will show us the path. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning. Realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Stone chosen, praise the work of God for this marvel in our eyes. reading 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does, does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to him, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, however have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So a few years ago, when I was much younger, I was an associate pastor at St. John the Lawn in Blue Springs. And I was sitting in my office one day and my, my cell phone started ringing and I could not find it. It was ringing and it was like right there and I could, looking through every pocket and I could not find it. And then it stopped ringing and I was getting very frustrated because I couldn't find my cell phone and I could hear it ringing. And then I, I called some of the employees in there. I go, help me find my cell phone. It's on my body and I cannot find it. <laughs> yeah, they looked at me a little strange. So we called it again. And eventually, someone noticed that it was sitting under, on the floor underneath my chair is where it was. The point of that story is that a lot of times we get so flustered and frustrated that we cannot see something right in front of our face. We get so worried or caught up in things. You know, how many times has your mother come to you saying, I can't find my glasses anywhere? <laughs> or, you know, you're talking on your phone and, and, and you're like, I can't find my phone, and you're talking on it. Or you can't find your keys and they're in your hand. You know, we do things like that. We just miss the obvious. And that's kind of what was going on here with these two people, Cleopas and companion, walking to Emmaus. They are walking along, and they're so caught up in their grief. They're so caught up in, in the idea that Jesus was not who they thought he was, that they are just giving up, and they're going off to Emmaus, and they're just kind of wallowing in their grief. And Jesus comes and walks with them, and they basically explain the resurrection to Jesus. But, they yet, but yet they still don't get it. 
they, they tell him that the tomb was empty, that Mary Magdalene, or the women, found the tomb empty. An angel appeared to them, um, and then somebody said that he was still alive. The angel said he was still alive. But he was not the one to redeem Israel. So they think he was a great prophet, but they were wanting a King David. They were wanting a Messiah, and their perception of a Messiah was a lot like what they thought was King David. And that's where Jesus, uh, he came from King David. He was, uh, King David was his ancestor. But King David was a human. King David was not divine. King David died and was buried. They wanted Jesus to free Israel from the Romans. That was their understanding of Messiah. And he did not fulfill that. And they did not ever expect him to die, and he died. So their whole vision of the Messiah, the Son of God, was skewed. Their perception was wrong. But they still knew that he was a prophet. So for us, we have to think about, okay, what is a, our perception of Jesus? What is our perception of God? When we get so caught up in things of this world, it's hard for us to understand and see that Christ, his spirit, is right there with us. He is present in this Eucharist that the children are going to receive for the first time today. That the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus, is in that Eucharist. And that spirit is here reaching out to us, just like he, Jesus reached out to these two disciples, to help to explain that to them that, yes, Jesus is the Son of God, that he did rise from the cross. And even though he appeared in human form to these disciples, he appears to us in the scripture, in the, the bread and the wine. He appears to us in the music that we sing. He's there walking with us when we are suffering, when we are grieving, when we are proclaimed, when we are frustrated. But a lot of times, we're just like these disciples. When we need him most is when we're least likely to feel his presence because we're so caught up in ourselves. You know, when we grow up, we go through periods where we're self-absorbed, when we're thinking just about our own issues and it's hard to see out. And that's what these two disciples were going through, all the disciples. They're going through their own feeling sorry for themselves because Jesus was not who they thought he should be. So think about who is Jesus for each and every one of us? Who is he in your mind? And do you see that spirit at work in this world? There's a lot of things in this world that don't want us to see, that try to keep our attention everywhere but on God. But the spirit is always right there with us, guiding us and leading us asking us to believe, inviting us to follow. Notice in this gospel, Jesus did not invite himself in. He intended to go further because he does not force himself upon us. He invites us to compassion. He invites us to love. He invites us to forgive. He invites us to be more like him. All we have to do is try. And the more we try, the easier it gets. And so when we look back on our life, we can see where the Holy Spirit was right there walking beside us or carrying us. Footprints in the sand. You know that prayer, that poem. It's based on this idea that when things are tough, the Spirit's right there just like always. But sometimes that Spirit needs to lift us and carry us and then we realize it later. So think about this week. What is your perception of the Messiah? Does it fit with who he really is? Or do we still need to practice a little bit more compassion? The beauty is, is that he did this for all of us. All we have to do is try.
Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father. Accompanied by Jesus, our eternal companion, let us entrust our needs to the Lord. For the church, that God will guide us toward greater awareness of the divine presence in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord here. For the spread of peace and nonviolence. By decreasing the use of weapons by states and citizens. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all new members of the church and for the children making their first communion this weekend. May they grow in love and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on significant journeys, for missionaries, pilgrims, aid workers, and members of the military, that God will protect them from harm lead them safely to their destination, and help them be aware of God's presence with them. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the gift of the Eucharist, that we may be strengthened each week as we celebrate God's love in the liturgy, let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Fernando and Anna Di Maggio and family, may God lead them on the path of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope, through the breaking of the bread, we come to know the love of your son, Jesus. Hear our prayers that, strengthened by his constant presence, we might live with the flame of faith alive in our heart. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We sing together number 538 on the journey to Emmaus, 538.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ. Peace. Peace at home. Peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We sing together number 912, Amen, El Cuerpo de Cristo, number 912.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Okay, so right at the end of this Mass, all the First Communion kids, if you please come down here, we'll take a group picture, and then there should be packets in your pew for those who are taking individual pictures. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. And we sing together number 521, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna, number 521.